It's the first direct contact known to have taken place between Armenia and Azerbaijan since the new fighting broke out on September 27. A ceasefire has been declared from 12 o'clock on October 10th for humanitarian purposes, to exchange prisoners and the bodies of the dead. It will be done under the guidance of the International Red Cross. The Moscow talks came after the Azerbaijan foreign minister attended talks in Geneva with the French, US and Russian envoys on Thursday. But just as the talks in Moscow began, the Azerbaijan president Ilham Aliyev said there could be no peace if Armenia continued to insist that Nagorno-Karabakh was part of its territory. Karabakh is Azerbaijan. Everyone should know this, including those in charge of Armenia today. I tell them again that if they commit fraud after the Moscow talks, they will regret it. We will take back our lands, peacefully or through war. In a rare move, Pyongyang reportedly staged a military parade early on Saturday morning to mark the 75th anniversary of the ruling Workers' Party. According to South Korea Joint Chief of Staff, a massive military parade along with large-scale equipment and personnel took place in the Kim Il-sung Square in Pyongyang at dawn. South Korea and U.S. intelligence authorities are analyzing the movements, including the possibility that it could be the actual event, not a rehearsal. The North tends to celebrate every 5th or 10th anniversary with larger-scale events like missile launches and troop parades. So it was widely expected that the communist regime would showcase new strategic weapons such as an intercontinental ballistic missile or a submarine-launched ballistic missile. It's also not immediately known if leader Kim Jong-un attended the event and what kinds of weapons were revealed. Four people were killed in Beirut on Friday night when a diesel tank exploded in the Tariq Jadida neighborhood, according to the Lebanese Red Cross. The state-run National News Agency said the blast happened inside a bakery in the basement of the building, causing a fire. As well as the four dead victims, several others were injured. It wasn't clear what triggered the initial explosion. Firefighters quickly put out the blaze and later helped trap residents to escape. Lebanese troops were deployed to the area and pushed back onlookers. The explosion comes just two months after a massive blast at Beirut's port killed nearly 200 people and injured about 6,500. Welcome back. Traffic on the N1 north between Safako Mahato Drive and Centurion and some major routes around Pretoria to the Union buildings will be disrupted until noon today as hundreds of cars, buckies and motorcycles driving at about 30 kilometers per hour protesting against farm murders. And uh, earlier, of course, and I believe we have those visuals, uh, they uh, were on the N14 uh, to uh, towards Pretoria heading to the Union buildings where we saw motorcycles and a variety of our vehicles are on a go slow moving at about uh, 30 kilometers per hour really just um, bringing uh, traffic to a stand still here on the N14 of course uh, this is part of the demonstration by the United uh, uh, the organization that says United against uh, uh, farm murders are uh, going all the way to the Union building TikTok faces another national ban, this time in Pakistan. Officials said Friday that they would block the video sharing app over immoral and indecent content. One told Reuters that they had repeatedly asked TikTok for a mechanism to block videos they consider inappropriate. With no such system on offer, regulators have decided to ban the app instead. The move comes after a final warning from the country's telecoms regulator in July. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan has also reportedly taken a keen interest. Officials say he ordered telecom authorities to do all they can to block vulgar content in the conservative Islamic Republic. TikTok has been caught in a global firestorm over security and privacy concerns. It's already blocked in India and faces tough scrutiny in the US and Australia.
The UN's World Food Programme says more than 8 million Zimbabweans will not have enough food by December if there's no urgent intervention. That's roughly 60% of the population. Malnutrition yeah, is of course something that uh, affects mostly uh, young children, uh, pregnant lactating women. Uh, in Zimbabwe also there's still a large number of people who are uh, dealing with chronic illness and of course their needs, their nutritional needs are, are different from, from people who are otherwise healthy. Um, so it's very important uh, that uh, we keep an, a close eye on that in the current circumstances. Basic goods are now beyond the reach of many people. Growing enough food is not an option for some. Years of droughts, the economic crisis, rising unemployment, soaring inflation and now coronavirus have hit families hard. Millions across the country are struggling in both large cities and rural areas. How's the bleeding? It's dramatic, just-released body cam video of the heroic pregnant wife who saved her husband after he was bitten by a shark. Come, 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 come. She caresses her stricken husband. Okay. And she's right there as medics rush him to an ambulance before being medevaced to a hospital. Was he down in the underwater when he got attacked? He just jumped in to start off. Like, just jumped off. And I saw the, the tail come up. It happened when Margot Dukes and husband Andrew Eddy were snorkeling with other family members off a boat in the Florida Keys. Margot's mother tells first responders what happened next. The next thing I know, I see flailing and he's screaming and there's just all red blood. And then he didn't know if he could make it to the ladder and my pregnant daughter jumped in to help him. Why is Saudi Arabia so obsessed with Turkey? Recently, Saudi Arabia's Chamber of Commerce called upon its citizens to boycott all things Turkish. Everything from coffee to TV dramas to vacations. Relations between Saudi Arabia and Turkey have been strained since the brutal murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi by a Saudi hit squad in Istanbul in 2018. The two countries have also found themselves on the opposite sides of many conflicts. The Saudis and their Gulf allies have propped up a Libyan warlord, an Egyptian dictator and a Syrian war criminal, while Turkey has supported their opponents. And Turkey has also come to the aid of tiny Qatar, which Saudi Arabia has bullied and blockaded for more than three years. Le diría que aquí no es bienvenido. No estamos dispuestos a que una monarquía corrupta que nos ha estado ocupando durante siglos venga aquí a pasearse, a militarizar media ciudad para hacerse cuatro fotos y quedar bien delante de la prensa. Y no pasa el pueblo de Cataluña representado al Parlamento. Han decidido que no puse más al presidente de Cataluña.
a symbol of national pride. Malaysia Airlines may be forced to go under by year end. According to an inside source, the carrier is reportedly asking for steep discounts from less thoughts for its aircraft and renegotiating terms with its creditors and suppliers. If that failed, Malaysia Airlines, which is wholly owned by sovereign wealth fund Khazana Nasiana, may be forced to go into liquidation. Now, when contacted, Khazana declined to comment. But in a radio interview with BFM, Finance Minister Tengku Zafro Abdulaziz was adamant that no more capital injection for the national carrier. Indeed, Malaysia Airlines, many believe, has never truly recovered from the mysterious disappearance of MH370 and the downing of MH17 over eastern Ukraine. It was taken private after that and restructured several times. Billions were pumped in by the government to keep it flying. But with COVID-19 grounding flights and wreaking havoc in the air travel industry, Malaysia Airlines desperately needs a lifeline.